Okay, we will begin our post-race media availability press conference for today's 38th annual drive for the Cure 250 uh, here at the Charlotte Motor Speedway Roval. And we'll join, we're joined by Colleg Racing owner Matt Colleg and crew chief for the number 10 car, Chris Rice. Um, gentlemen, congratulations on this win. Um, we'll start with, uh, with you, Matt. Uh, team in the playoffs, team with the, in victory lane. Um, can't get much better than that here at Charlotte. Uh, you know what? We're really excited. We're really excited to be here. This is the first time I've been in the media center uh, like this, so it's good to be up here and uh, good to have another trophy. I actually forgot in victory lane. I knew we won, but I forgot that we actually get a hardware. So, uh, so I'm really excited about that. Um, yeah, you know, it was a shame uh, that Justin, you know, the 11 had uh, trouble early. Uh, I mean, what, one lap in, two laps in. Uh, so it kind of put a you know, a damper on our spirits there for about, uh, for about half the race. But then, um, you know, when, when the 10 car was up there f in front and AJ was the fastest guy on the track by far, uh, you know, that, that, uh, that helped. So we're really proud of AJ and really proud of Chris Rice, and his whole colleague racing team. I mean, we've been through, uh, we've been through a lot this year, uh, probably more than people, well, people know we've been through a lot, but uh, we have been through a lot. And to have two uh, trophies now, uh, couldn't be more excited. And Chris, obviously, in your, from your perspective, setting up a car for such a unique course uh, and to be successful at that, uh, maybe talk about the challenges coming into this weekend and, and getting that car right to uh, end up in victory lane. Yeah, well, the challenges probably started way back when we lost Nick Harrison. Um, you know, uh, Matt, Matt made myself president of the company, and uh, we had two – Two good crew chiefs with Alex Yance that's doing it on the 11, and we had Nick Harrison. So I was going to kind of hang back and, and be, with, be with Matt, but it, it all went down. You know, we, we're doing what we can do with it, and uh, thank goodness I've got experience on the box. And uh, we have a great team. Byron Daly, the engineer, spent a lot of time on the Roval um, setup, and, and it's just paid off. A.J. Allmendinger has made college racing so much better, along with Justin Haley and Ross Chastain and Elliot Sadler. Uh, I just can't thank all of them enough, but – I set AJ down in mid Ohio and he was beating himself up. You guys know how hard AJ can beat himself up. And um, I told him, I said, hey, man, you're way better than our race team right now. And, and we got to get to your level. And once we get to your level, then you can beat yourself up. But we're not to your level. And, and we won today because of AJ. We, our cars, he'll still got to get better, right? Like we got to be able to beat the 20 and beat the double zero. We could be very aggressive on pitch strategy, very aggressive on the racetrack. Brett Griffin done a great job of spotting Clint Boyer's spotter and, and telling him how much distance he had. And, uh, it's just awesome to be in victory lane and, and to go trophy hunt with that 10 car because we have probably two but maybe three more races that we're going to trophy hunt with. Awesome. All right. If you have a question for these gentlemen, please raise your hand. We'll get a mic to you. <clears throat> and We'll open it up here in the center with uh, Nate Ryan. Uh, Nate Ryan, NBC Sports. So I, I think this is AJ's last race with the team this year. Uh, it was a successful run, it sounds like. Would, would you have more plans for him next year? Or what's the plan? Um, yeah, we definitely have more plans for AJ because AJ can help us uh, in, in many areas with our drivers. Uh, Tyler Reddick, uh, he picked Tyler Reddick up seconds. I don't know if you watched Tyler Reddick last year at the road courses, but Justin, Justin, Tyler, and AJ spent a lot of time in a simulator. And uh, AJ just helped all of us, but uh, I told AJ standing in victory lane, we just, we just signed him to all the road courses in our either our second or third car for the, until he wants to not do it anymore, and probably some speedway racing because he's pretty good at that also. Daniel, did you have a question? And Dustin, and then we'll go to Jordan. Uh, Daniel McFadden with NBC Sports. Just, can you describe what, what it was like for you guys over the, uh, that last 10 laps or so with the multiple restarts and having to – see him have to hold off the field multiple times to get this one? Uh, I'll, I'll let Matt talk about this, but I looked at him with about, uh, I don't know, 17 to go when we took the lead from Christopher. And we did not, when we come out of pit road, we watched behind us the 22 and the 20 race really hard trying to be in front of each other and that we knew they were spinning the tires. But I looked at him and I said, this is all we asked for. We, we asked for a chance. We have a chance and that's up to us. But uh, I'll let Matt talk about how he felt because he got up on top of the seat there, Dan. Well, all you want to do is put yourself in a position, and that's what Chris is talking about. You just want to be in a position to win at the end. Uh, and so it was anxious. I mean, it's nerve-wracking. I mean, you, you're, you're the fastest car. Um, you know you're running away with it, and then caution comes out. And you know that uh, you know you're faster than everybody, 
and you know that AJ knows that, and they're only, you know, really their only strategy left is to wreck him. And so, uh, you know, it's just ner it's more nerve-wracking to just get through that first turn, and then he was off. But, uh, but now that that's over, uh, we get another trophy. So it's cool. Go to uh, Dustin and then Jordan. Dustin Long, NBC Sports. I have a couple questions. Uh, I guess, first of all, Chris, um, on the other side of things, Justin Haley, uh, looks like he's 39 points out. What, uh, what kind of a hole is he in? That's big. <laughs> That's a big hole. We got to go win, and we haven't been a winning race team on the 11 camp. So what we have to do is strive to get to Homestead to try to finish fifth um, and, and race where we can race. You know, we were fortunate enough to with, with Blake Cook the first year to move on and almost move on to the Final Four. And it, the cards have kind of been stacked against us since. We came here last year with Ryan Truex. We, we ended up getting in an accident. We came here the year before, and we had no power steering with Blake Cook, and now this happened. So – uh, maybe this is to set up for Justin's next year run at the championship, and that's that's what we got to look forward to. And we just got to keep those guys solid, keep growing Justin, keep growing Alex, and uh, and and do what we can do. Don't go out to try to. We know we haven't been a winning race team at those style racetracks. We're not. It's not a secret. So uh, we want to go and try to run in the top five, gain all the points we can, and uh, not get run over by somebody, and and come away from there with that another good points day, and then just keep moving on through the through the year. And also, for either one of you, uh, you guys talked about multiple cars. I know you've talked about it in the past. Is the plan still second car? And how, I think you, you guys have mentioned Ross Chastain. Um, where are things with that? Or might some of the things that have happened this weekend in the uh, Cup Garage kind of change what might impact you guys? Well, I'm sure the Cup Garage is going crazy looking for Ross to drive one of the cars. And we're doing everything we can to try to find funding to put Ross in a car and uh, – we love Ross Chastain. We love Justin Haley. We definitely love A.J. Allmendinger, obviously. But um, we would love to have Ross in one of our cars. I said it at Daytona, and um, I'll say it again here. Uh, I, we feel like Ross is on top of his game. Uh, I feel like next year our team will be on top of their game, and it's time to go win some races at the Ovals. You know, with Christopher Bale leaving, uh, I call him Superman in the Xfinity Series because he reminds me of Kyle Busch, and he's going to be that good in the cup side. So uh, we would love to have Ross over there, and him and Justin go after a championship. Okay, we're good with joint. Any other questions for our winning team? Bring that trophy on up here. Awesome. This guy. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Any final questions for either Matt or Chris? All right. Congratulations, gentlemen. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everybody. Good hey, thank you, all you reporters that do everything for NASCAR. I know sometimes you get beat up, but uh, we really appreciate it. Our door is always open. Uh, we might not always tell you what you want to hear, but thank you, guys. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, we are here with the winner of today's 38th annual drive for the Cure 250, presented by Blue Cross Blue Shield. And as the driver of the number 10 digital ally Chevrolet for Colleg Racing, A.J. Allmendinger. A.J., congratulations. Uh, what I believe is your final race of 2019 um, and what NASCAR's most unique course, the Roval. Uh, talk about the, the win there and how challenging it was out there, please. Yeah, I mean, it was, uh, it was for sure challenging. It's, this racetrack's so fun. I really enjoy it. Uh, you know, it's, I said it last year. It takes me back to my, my champ car days. It's a, it's a street course that... If you make a small mistake, it's usually huge consequences. So it makes it fun to race on, uh, but very difficult. And, you know, we've, everybody at College Racing, we, we've worked hard to try to make our race cars faster. And we've improved them from Watkins Glen till now. And, uh, you know, it was so critical to get up front. I, when I was behind the 20 or, or like the double zero or the 98, I'd start using the tires up. I just couldn't kind of dictate my own pace. So I was, knew I had to be very aggressive behind Christopher early in that last run to get around him. And I felt like if I got around him, I could at least dictate my own pace and then really see from there what kind of speed we had. And, and we had a lot of speed. We were able to, to start pulling away from him. I thought, you know, maybe Chase Briscoe was probably the, the quickest car out there. If he could, could have got to second, might have had a chance uh, to get us. But, you know, from there, just try to pace myself and then – those last how many restarts was just trying to be uh, trying to just change it up enough so Austin just uh, 
couldn't quite figure it out. I knew just I needed about a half a car into turn one, and you know it was really nice having Tyler Reddick behind me because we've worked well on the on the road courses together. He kept telling me that you know he needed me to help him, and then he'd somehow out qualify me every race. And uh, I mean the kid can wheel a race car, so I knew he wouldn't be too aggressive on the restart. So I could just really focus on the 22 and try to get clean off of turn one. And then once we did that, I knew I could kind of just drive away. Thank you, AJ, and we'll open it up with questions here. If you have one, raise your hand. Hey, AJ, Pete McColl with AutoRacing1.com. You've had a couple of races this season where you've had some bad luck with this disqualification. <laughs> Does that weigh in, weigh in your mind a lot when you're, when you're racing out there? And also, when you took the checkered flag today, would that cross your mind at all? I mean, I'd, I'd, hell, I'd, I'd lie if I said it hasn't crossed my mind. Have we, have we, do we pass? Have we passed here? Anyway, I'm not going to say anything yet. Um, no, I mean, both both the EQs, we know what happened. It was, it was uh, you know, at, at Daytona, it was something that was a, a mistake kind of in the, in the engine department a little bit, and, and we know what happened there. It was never intent to, to, uh, to improve, and it happened late in the race. So, unfortunately, it wasn't there the whole time. Uh, and then Watkins Glen was just a self-induced error on the team you know we made a mistake on on not getting it uh not putting the right stuff in the back of the race car so throughout the course of the race it was just lowering itself which told him i said if we're going to cheat we probably should do it better because that thing was miserable to drive <laughs> with the back of the car slammed so point being you know it was self it was self, it, it's we deserved it it was self-induced mistakes but um you know for me i all i can do is go out there and drive the wheels off it, and, and whatever happens after that happens after that. You know, I know that whatever whatever happened today, I, I gave everything I had, and, and whatever the result was going to be, it's going to be. Go to Daniel. Daniel McFadden, NBC Sports. AJ, could you just, like, kind of walk us through the maneuver you pulled to get by Christopher Bell? How In that part of the track, how risky is doing that when you're about to come back up onto the, the oval? Oh, it's risky. I thought the outside pass on the double zero was probably more risky because I was putting myself against the wall when it was happening. But, um, you know, I knew where he was strong. He was really strong on, on to NASCAR 1. And I could kind of hang with him through the, through the chicane. And then his car was really strong putting power down after the last chicane. So I knew I kind of had to make a move early and my car was really good for the first six or seven laps behind cars and then as I said the tires would kind of start going away so I rolled a ton of speed in there and just kind of put a nose under them and, and it made him just look enough in the I guess it had been turn five the right hander portion of it that he just kind of left a little bit of room and I just tried to set him up to where I could cross him over down the hill and then once you get to the inside it's kind of your position and um, you know, I, I wasn't going to try to run him to the fence or anything, but I knew I had to get to the lead as quick as possible, and um, you know, fortunately, it worked out. We get to Bob, Peter, go to the press box, and then come back down here. Tom Baker, Race Chaser Media and WSIC TV. AJ, talk a little bit about college racing and the progress that's been made this year, because it really feels like this is a team that's really escalating very quickly. And I know that uh, both Matt and Chris just expressed to us that they want you to be a very big part of their future. Can you talk a little bit about the team and what it's been like to be a part of this from uh, your perspective? Yeah, I mean, they're they're just a fun group, you know, and it starts with Matt Colling. He's just got such a positive energy, and obviously anybody that's met Chris Rice knows his positive energy. Um, so it's just a, a great group of guys just to be around in general. And, you know, relatively, it's still a young team. I mean, it's only, you know, what do we have, four or five years old on, on the team now, basically. So, you know, they're, they're slowly building, and, and Justin Haley's been doing such a good job for him this year. I think he's got, you know, record top tens for, for the team. Um, you know, it's disappointing. It was, I was sad to see under yellow. I could see on the big screen that they're having a mechanical issue, and that just... Uh, Knowing for him to try to get to the next round, that was that was uh, difficult to to see. So, 
you know, they're building. And of course, you'd always like everything to happen quicker. Um, you know, you'd love to just show up to the racetrack and everything's perfect and you're right there with Gibbs and, and Stuart Haas and Penske. Um, but it just doesn't happen like that. So it's a lot of hard work and, and you know, of course I wanted to come here and win, but what made it nice was, was Matt and, and especially Chris, you know, they, they said that they just wanted me to help them get better. Of course, you know, ult winning's the ultimate goal, but you know, they made it clear to me that if we didn't win, it wasn't, it wasn't on me. It was, it was us trying to get better. So it was fun to have that progress over the, the four or five races that I've spent because I felt like from Watkins Glen to Mid-Ohio, compared to here, the race cars got a lot better. So um, I, I enjoy it. And, you know, like I told them, if, if they want me to drive, you know, I'll for sure come drive with them. Peter and then Bob. Peter Straw to TSJ Sports. AJ, there's been controversy in recent weeks about playoff drivers racing non-playoff drivers. Where do you draw the line, given how hard you race Bell, Custer, and others today? Yeah, I mean, it's it's a uh, it's a fine line. You know, everybody's out there to race. The you don't want to be the guy that that wrecks somebody's playoff chances or championship chances. Um, but you know, I'm. They put me in the race car to, to go win. They didn't put me just to ride around and be, be nice to everybody. So, you know, I made the decision that, if, especially for the win, I was going to do, you know, whatever it took. You know, of course, I don't want to just drive somebody straight to the fence and, and wreck them for a win. But I was going to be aggressive and, and make sure that I had an opportunity to do what I was supposed to do and for our race team, for college racing, to go win the race. You know, I, I'll be honest, it was easier with Christopher because I knew he was already in, and that the, I was willing to take a little bit more of a chance with him. But um, you know, it's there's a fine line. It, it's especially coming for the win. I've always had the thought process: they got more more to lose than I do. So it's it's how bad that they want to take a chance. Bob, uh, Bob Hockers, Fox Sports. I have two. The first, you know, what are your emotions? I mean, a year ago. You didn't even know if you'd be racing this year or if you'd race NASCAR again, and now you've got a, another NASCAR win. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, you know, we sat here this time last year and uh, you know, definitely different emotions. Um, you know, as as I said on TV, and I always say, you know, what Tad and Jody did for me and, and my family to give me another opportunity and, and what we built together, and we had success, and... Uh, obviously didn't end the way we probably either one, of, either one of us wanted it to. And, you know, that's a part of business. It is what it is. Uh, but, you know, it allowed me to, to take a step back and, and see what I really wanted to do. And, and, you know, stuff like this where I can come and do certain races makes it a lot more enjoyable. You know, we, we all know it, all you guys know it, that, that especially cover this every week. It's a grind. It's a grind for all of us. And it can, it can be pretty hard when, heck, it's hard when it's going well. It can be really difficult when it's going bad. And the last couple of years weren't a lot of fun, and, and uh, I probably needed a break. So uh, I had some emotion for sure on that last lap to, uh, to know that I could still get it done. And, uh, you know, it makes it, makes it enjoyable to come with a group like College Racing and, and uh, everybody's fighting together. And that's, that's what's really key is we're all in it together. They made it clear to me that we're all in it together to, to be better win and lose as a team, and, and uh, that makes it more enjoyable. And I also wanted to ask, did you see the kind of the move between Briscoe and Bell, and Bell gets penalized for uh, cutting that I didn't. front stretch chicane? Because he, 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 Bell pretty much says he got pinched and he had nowhere else to go. So I guess as a driver, like, do you just treat that, that chicane almost as a wall, or how? Yeah, I mean, it's, it, it's the, way, yeah, the way they talk about in the driver's meeting, I mean, it's it's up to their discretion on if you miss the chicane for whatever reason that they can penalize you. So it's, it puts a driver in a tough situation. Do you, do you jump the turtle and, and just try to stay on the racetrack and you both wreck or somebody wrecks? I mean, it's, I didn't see the wreck. I just kind of glanced up on the, on the big board and, and saw Chase spinning. So I didn't see exactly what happened, but you know, that was my thought process. It, it's, it's the way the chicanes are. It puts the driver, especially that's on the outside, getting pushed at a tough position. So I don't know what the right answer is, but, you know, you got to make a decision. So, um, yeah, it's, it's their discretion. They're, they're going to make the call. 
I believe we're clear in the press box, but is that true? Any questions from the press box? Okay, we'll bring it back up front to Mike, then Dustin, then Jordan. I'll kick it off with Dustin, go ahead. Dustin Long, NBC Sports. Um, AJ, I I'm, I'm curious your perspective. Um, you've got so much more experience than, than Christopher. Um, and you know, I may be wrong, but I can't remember too many times offhand where maybe somebody's kind of muscled him because he's always had one of the better cars and maybe hasn't been challenged in that sense. Was that something that, that you were able to kind of take advantage of a learning experience for him, or am I just reading too much into just that, that pass that you made? No, I mean, I mean, let's call it what it is. Christopher Bell's phenomenal. I mean, it's, I love watching him race a car. I know it doesn't matter what type of car, whether it's uh, Xfinity car or, or when he gets in the Cup Series or when he goes out to the midget races or sprint cars. I mean, the kid is phenomenal. So we know what kind of superstar he already is, and he's going to be. And, we, you know, when you put a superstar like that in one of the best cars or, or maybe the best car in the Xfinity Series right now, we see what happens. So being behind Christopher, especially like at Road America where I was quicker early and my tires started going away and, and he could start dictating his own pace, that's – I knew if I got stuck behind him, he's good enough. And, he, he, you know, he's already made so many big steps as a road course driver. I mean, he's still – got more to go but I mean it's he's so close so I just knew if I was stuck behind him for a couple more laps he could start running his own pace and be comfortable it's probably going to be game over for me like it was at Road America so I knew I had to go then and then yeah I wanted to see what what he could do behind me and I was hoping he'd start using his stuff up which looked like what was starting to happen but um you know it was just I saw an opening I had to go it, it, it had nothing to do with Christopher Bell it was if it was in the Cup Series, I'd have done the same thing. It just I had to go then because I knew about four or five more laps behind him, it was probably going to be game over. Mike? Mike Neff from FrontStretch.com and the Racing Brotherhood Foundation. Uh, you mentioned that this is a grind and you got to take a chance away. Are you content now being a road course ringer and doing the occasional sports car race? Or if the opportunity presents itself, would you like to go back to full time in one of the – NASCAR National Series? Uh, probably not, honestly. I mean, it's – you have to really look at the – I'm not going to say no because you just never know what situation can arise. Um, but, you know, I'm open – it's not just road course race. I'm open to do other races. Uh, you know, it just comes down to being in a competitive car. It's no fun just to go out there just to do the races. Uh, but, yeah, I would, I would enjoy doing more races – here and there and in the in the right opportunity and you get in it and know you can go out there and have a chance to to win that's what makes it fun um but to do it every every weekend right now probably not any more questions for aj wrap it up here with nate come on nate i gotta work tomorrow what the <laughs> hell let's go yeah. you want me to fly to white plains for you yeah i am flying to white plains <laughs> Uh, Nate Ryan, NBC Sports. So uh, when Chris Rice was in here, he said that he pretty much offered you every road course race for them next year and maybe super speedway races too. Is that maybe your plan for 2020? Do you think you'll run all those well, races? Well, he told me the super speedway races. Like, I don't think, I don't, I don't know if I have a, a real say in that. It's like, hey, you're going to do those. I'm like, really? You sure? Like, all of them? Um, yeah, I mean, it's, I, I told him, I, I enjoy the race team. If there's more races to, I mean, they're growing. There's more races to do. I'd love to do it with them. And, um, you know, stuff like this what is what makes it real, real great. So, um, yeah, we'll see what happens. Now i got to go to work, Nate. Congratulations, AJ. Thanks so much. Appreciate your time.